Hey guys, Rich from Rich Mid Gaming. Welcome to the weekly bugle. Uh, apologies, we are 24 hours late. Um, I was just Quinn. They can't hear yet. I purposely muted you. Um, yeah, I I caught myself some norovirus, which was uh, yeah absolutely delightful. Um, joining me as ever is Mr. Quinn Duggan. Quinn, how the hell are you doing, sir? Hello, I'm building Agent Venom. Delightful. Uh, but as well as Quinn, uh, and again, I always say this whenever we've got a guest on, because it means essentially you go from the show being 50% Quinn to only 33%. So hopefully you can watch it for that little bit longer. But we lose um, viewers, yeah? <laughs> uh, but we've also got the king of the Inhumans himself, Mr. Ron Walker. Ron, how are you doing? All right, dude. It it's literally taken you winning a sixty four player event with what many said is the worst affiliation in the game to actually come on here because we've been trying to get you on for such a long time. <clears throat> um, how's things? It's all good. Um, Facebook and Discord hasn't stopped since the event. But <laughs> on that, pretty sound. How uh, how many others? Obviously, you did a, a podcast with Aaron yesterday or the day before. Uh, how how many others um, have 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 reached out to you and and been asking for you to come on the show? Uh, at least another four or five. Brilliant. Anyone that particularly sticks out in your mind? Any any responses in particular that you liked? <laughs> um, no, not really. You know, just just casually, politely refusing. <laughs> that is very much your style, Ron. You are a very polite boy. Yes, yes, yeah. I, so, I will for be anyone back that in two seconds, I need a lighter. <laughs> no worries. So, for anyone that doesn't know uh, what we are talking about, uh, both Quinn, Ron, and myself um, were lucky enough to be over at York the weekend just gone. Uh, we were over at York Race, race Course uh, at the MCP Weekender, um, one of, if not the biggest event, I think we've had in the uk um definitely the most i would say competitive event we've had in the uk um players from not just the uk but all around the uk plus further afar as well um so we had a whole bunch of guys coming over from ireland uh, we also had some guys coming over from Europe as well. Plus, we managed to drag all of the London lot. I think they represented themselves very well. I think it was 15 or 20 of them turned up. Um, and Ron had already told me and Quinn what he was doing beforehand and that he was going to take in humans. And his plan was to just take names. And I think, Ron, you were 3-0, obviously, at the end of day one. Um, and... We sort of thought then, well, maybe there's a chance, uh, even with the Inhumans. Um, but we'll get into that a little bit later on. We do have some other stuff that we're going to go through first. Um, and first of all, we want to take a look at the latest character release, another four threat, because it has been such a long time since we've had a four threat character. Um, yeah, but uh, let's take a quick look at... Uh, Psylocke, a.k.a. Elizabeth Braddock. 3-3-4, um, three, three, defensive stats, 6 stamina, as we already mentioned, 4 threat character, size 2, medium move, and comes on a small base. Um, 3 attacks, 2 builders, which I'm always a fan of, 2 builders. Uh, telekinetic Katana, which is range 2, strength 5, uh, but you do get to choose whether it is energy or mystic, which is very nice. Um, and it's power equal to damage dealt uh, and neural disruption. For each wild in the attack roll, the target character loses one power. Um, I think that's something we haven't seen before, Ron Quinn. We've obviously, it's like the sap, but without the you get the power off the back end of it, isn't we, we've it? We've had concussive force off the back of Cyclops' spend, but that's limited to one. Yes. Um, widow Sting, two-threat Widow. Yeah, once again, yes. li limited to one as well, right, Ron? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, in, in, in interesting interesting builder. Uh, I think for a four-threat, it's absolutely fine. 
Um, and then her second builder is Cybo. It's going to be a mystic attack, range four, strength four, guaranteed one power, but it's got pursuit on there um, on a hit as well, which is which is quite nice. Uh, before damage is dealt, advance toward the character uh, or the target character short, um, which you know maybe does allow you to get in range for a psionic assault or something like that. Um, Ron, what are your thoughts on her attacks and and, and what she's got? Um, I think she's all right. I don't know. I don't think. Uh, I don't think she really holds up to the other four threats that have been recently released, like uh, Rhino, Agent Venom, Spider Woman, Beta Ray Bill. Like she seems okay, but yeah, I'm not overly impressed. Yeah, I think I think I've got to agree, um, especially in terms of the attacks. I do like having two builders. I think that is nice. So if you if you need that one power and you need it guaranteed, it's uh, it's quite nice. Um, Quinn, what are your initial thoughts just based on based on her attacks and what she's got? Um, I, I like, you know, the fact she's got mystic attacks. Mystic attacks are always something that a lot of affiliations want to splash in, I find. Um, overall, with the attacks in general, I mean, obviously, we see some stuff on her card later on that boosts them a little bit. But as they are bare bones, they are barely standard. Like they're not particularly flashy. Yeah, she's got some stuff in 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 her um, in her kit as well, though. So first, uh, she's got one active superpower: telekinetic combat. Telekinetic combat enhancement. There we go. Cost two power. Um, make a short advance. And then the next time it makes a telekinetic attack uh, this turn, add two dice to the attack roll. Superpower can only be used once per turn. So for for two power, you get to make a short move and add two dice to her builder, which seems okay. I, you know, I don't think it's I don't think it's amazing, but you know that that may be combined with a cyber, for example, may mean that. You can get in range um, a little bit earlier for that katana attack. She's then got a reactive telepathic precognition. It's power X. While this character is attacking or defending, during the modified die step of the attack, it may spend any amount of power to use its superpower. For each power spent, you may reroll one of its attack or defense dice. Again, can only be used once per turn. Um, martial artists, so blanks on energy and physical within range two and then lastly stealth um which i do think that martial arts and stealth um does make her a little bit better than a lot of the, the other sort of big uh mystic attackers that we've got in the game uh just purely because if you get somebody within two are we are we, are we boring you quinn no no, no. I, i've told you i was a seven agent but i'm to start um but I do think it makes that a little bit less susceptible to, um, at least within two, um, physical attacks. But yeah, I think I think I'm in agreement with you, Ron, where she just doesn't. She almost feels uh, if you were to take Daredevil and Electra and combine them, like as in the original Daredevil. Oh, um, she she's not as bad as either of them. <laughs> Come on, geez. I'm not saying she's as bad as either of them. I'm just saying about? that there isn't. Great. <laughs> I mean, we are we, we we do have the 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 king of I'll take whatever shit and make it work on here, um, so yeah. Um, Justin, hope you're well. Swedish troll, hope you're doing well. Daz, good evening, buddy. Glenn, poor Ron, getting used and passed around the content creators. Gregors, hope you're well, buddy. Uh, Mr. Cameron, sorry, Doctor Cameron, he does get very annoyed, doesn't he? Um, Mr. Dr. Cameron. Mr. Dr. Cameron, yeah. Ian, first piece of live action from me. Well, welcome, Ian. Raven's Guard, hello. Uh, Swedish Troll, hope you're good. Charcoal, bonjour. Uh, not miss anything big yet, buddy. Uh, Bailey Gaming, did anyone from the Danger Room arise to your offer? No, they didn't. Uh, for anyone that doesn't know what we're on about, um, go check out the Danger Room Discord. Um, really was hoping for a long move on her. Yeah, yeah. I... I feel like a long move and she would have felt 
a lot better. I mean, um, maybe they're wary of giving X Men an affiliated long mover because that just makes the extract jank even more silly. I don't think she needs a long move. I think they should have made telekinetic combat enhancement also affect Cybo. Okay, yeah, yeah. Or maybe like make it like a medium move. Because then you spend two power for a range four, six dice mystic and get two short moves off it. Yeah. Yeah, that's quite nice. Good. Well, you're, yeah. you're effectively spending one, right? Because it's two up front, but you get one back. Yeah, so if you was to make telekinetic combat enhancement also affect Cybo, I don't think you give Cybo power gain. Okay. Do you maybe then up it a die? No, I think you keep it at four. I think otherwise it's a bit meh. Like, four dice pursue, like, no cost but also no gain is a bit meh. I suppose that's, like, quite similar to um, Daredevils. Maybe you make it a guaranteed pursuit like his. Yeah, same as Angela. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah, um, I think if, Angela's a hit. If you, I think yeah. if you take the power gain off, then then I think it does need to be a guaranteed pursuit. But yeah. look, I mean, I I think I think she'll work well in um, under Storm's leadership as well. Um, more so because of the of the bounce than anything else, um, or the hop, I, whatever you want to call it. I don't know. Like, I think you'd still take if you, if you want a Mystic Splash. I think you still take magic as a threat less. Yeah, probably, yeah. For the same threat, you can have Emma Frost. Yep. You could have Cyclops, you know, what I've said. Maybe that's your next, uh, maybe that's your next one, Ron, is you've got to he's take Cyclops. Al he's already made that work, to be fair. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe. Um, she is exactly the same on her injured side with the exception as she does go down a stamina so she's only a 6-5 which seems to be the norm nowadays for 4 threats like all of the th 4 threats we've had lately I think are a 6-5 um, 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 Agent Rhino 7-7 seven, seven. Who is? Rhino 7-7 seven, seven? Oh, He doesn't count does he? Rhino 7-7, seven, seven, Agent Venom I believe is 6-6 six, six. I don't know, you've got his um, card in front of you, have you have a look? I, I don't have his card in front of me. I've got <laughs> I'm, right, fine. Uh, Emma's definitely 6-6. Six, six. Uh, Bill, is, Bill yeah. is six five. I think because Maybe she's got martial artist stealth, she can afford yeah. to drop a stam. Yeah, yeah, I think you're probably right. Venom, six, six. Yeah, I think you're probably right, she probably can. Um, was Psylocke ever in Weapon X? Would be nice to have an affiliated mystic and... Energy builder. As Ooh. far as I'm aware, she has no affiliation to them. I mean, that doesn't mean she won't be in there, but. Oh, yeah. Because, <laughs> you know, affiliations are whatever the fuck AMG want to make up on the day, but, you know. This is very true. This is very true indeed. Um, but, yeah, I mean, overall, I think, I think she's definitely the lesser of the two in that. Uh, Breeze Troll, that perfect pack. casting. Perfect casting. Who's this, sorry? Please troll. Danny DeVito for Psylocke in the MCU. <laughs> Danny DeVito for anything. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I started mind blasting. Dear Lord. Dear Lord. Well, with um, Psylocke being out, it means that we have now got two characters for Excalibur affiliation. Yeah. That'd be cool. This is true. This is very true indeed. Uh, but yeah, let us know in the chat. What do you think? Um, you know, do you think she's any good? Do you think she'll be good? I think she'll just be okay. Like, I don't think, you know, I don't think there's anything particularly good about her. Um, but yeah, there we go. Right, Ron, the main reason for why you're here. Talk us through this fucking roster because... <laughs> No, don't. Leave, leave it a mystery, Ron. They don't Genu deserve to know. Genuinely, like, it had people baffled this weekend because, obviously, in humans, I think it's fair to say, Ron, even though you won with them, they are still... They're not the most competitive roster, right? Or competitive affiliation. Right, the they're not something... They're not something that a new a new player could pick up and very easily uh, 
get some good results with. Um, but let's quickly run through your roster and we'll talk through sort of some strange or what may seem strange choices. Um, and then we'll, we'll, we'll talk through your reasoning for them and kind of what, what everyone's role is within, within the roster. So starting out then, we've got Beast, we've got Black Bolt, we've got Captain America, Sam Wilson, we've got Crystal, we've got the bestest boy, Medusa, Ms. Marvel, Pyro, Rocket Raccoon, and just in case playing in humans wasn't hard enough, we have Ulick in the mix there as well. Um, so Ron, for anyone that doesn't know that's watching, in humans, um, what what is the the sort of play style of in humans and, 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 and how you play them? Uh, so in humans mainly can play like any sort of game plan because um the in affiliation characters all have a set role um but i i've tended to lean more towards the attrition side of them um purely because i wanted to run ulik and that's pretty much the only reason <laughs> and 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 what had you so obsessed with with running ulik well, out of all the releases that we've seen recently, like I've been speaking to Quinn quite a lot about it, and Ulik was the only one I was looking forward to. And then when he was shown, I was extremely disappointed. It was like the bear all over again. <laughs> and then they showed us Rock and Troll, and it kind of like brought my enthusiasm back for him. That, that so, little lightning bulb struck above your head. So yeah, so I thought, well, what's the best place I can utilize all this janky Ram 1 Crushing Leap and Rock and Troll shenanigans, and obviously it's always fall to it always falls to Inhumans. Yeah, well they're the one that can give guaranteed power unless you're going to put him in Dark Dimension, and you know I don't even think you're that crazy, um, or maybe you are. Who the hell knows? Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So for anyone that doesn't know, um, Rock and Troll. Let's see if you can put it up there. There we go. Uh, Ulik may spend three power to play this card. He drops all objective tokens he is holding, then place Ulik within five of his current position. Um, but Ron, this can be played outside of Ulik's activation as well, can't it? it can. So you don't you don't have to play there. And the fact that he starts on um, two power because of the trollish temper means that using Black Bolt's leadership, you only need to get one pa one additional power onto him um, to be able to do that, which is just crazy. Absolutely crazy. Um, so what would you say was your core? So when you're building your your squad out for the games that you're, that you're coming to, because um, obviously you've only got... Uh, and actually, no, you've got six Inhumans characters there, haven't you? Because obviously Ms. Marvel and, and Beast are Inhumans as well. But um, what obviously... You know, other than Black Ball, what what's your starting point for for building your squad? Uh, Medusa and Black Ball are in one hundred percent. I never ever play in humans without Medusa. Yeah, um, she's still then, very good, isn't she? Even she, even oh, after she's the changes, she's incredible. Like you know, e even after the changes, she's still like a top tier four threat. Yeah. Um, but then it basically comes down to what crisis I'm playing and what I'm versus. So. The next one was, do I take Ulik or not? And five out of the six games, I took Ulik. <laughs> Dear me. So he wasn't there for uh, for window dressing. You actually used him. I, I I saw the game against Aaron on the back end of the game against Aaron. So no, um, I know you took him then, but I didn't realise it was five of the six uh, uh, games yeah. you played. Yeah, five of the six um, I took Ulik. That is, that is pretty crazy. That is pretty crazy. Um, um I mean, obviously, Pyro speaks for himself. I think at the moment, in terms of um, what he what he does and and what he brings, you obviously brought the Pyrotechnics card with you, uh, which I think um, I think is pretty much stapled to him as a character. Right, it's one of the reasons why he's so good. Um, did you did you get to use it at all? Did you get to play Pyro much? Didn't use Pyro at all. Oh he's wow! The only character out of all ten I didn't use. <laughs> Now, did you take Pyro on because you thought everyone else is taking Pyro? I'm going to put Pyro in my list so that they think they have to deal with Pyro. 
That is exactly the reason. <laughs> Lies. Ron wanted to be one of the cool kids that took pyro, so he put him in because of peer pressure. <laughs> Ron always bends to peer pressure. I oh, also yes. had Rhino in, but I ultimately decided I needed a two threat, so I did drop Rhino, but I had no intention of playing pyro. I had no intention of playing Rhino. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Um, you did bring, however, the uh, the Trash Panda with you, Rocket Raccoon. Um, I did. Which, you know, I think you mentioned there that you play into the attrition side of the game a lot. Um, you know, being able to feed extra power into Rocket for more hard-on enforcers, as it shall now forever be known, um, is is never bad. But you don't often see Rocket without Groot. Um, so again, did you did you manage to play with him much? And what's your sort of play style with with Rocket when you're using him in uh, in Inhumans? Uh, so I managed to play with Rocket two games. Uh, game one versus uh, Liam Jordan's Web Warriors. And game four versus Aaron's Web Warriors. And the literal reason I took Rocket is because I needed a two threat. I wanted a two threat. I didn't use power. And I could basically just use him as a back point sitter and still shoot. So my options was Rocket, Wong, and Bullseye. And ultimately I went with Rocket as I think he's tankier of the three just because he always gets cover. Yeah, that cover really, really does help, doesn't it? It also uh, range five, right? He's further away from the fight than yeah. He could well. literally just sit on like a back gamma, and, uh, a back uh, gamma or back demon, shoot a couple of five shots, maybe get one or two power, transfer it to someone. That, that's literally his whole purpose. So not going yeah. for hard on enforcers. No, nope. not going for hard on enforcers. No, no I suppose no actually hard I didn't. Enforcers, no yeah. booby traps. I didn't. I didn't think of it in that way. Really, I suppose there's a little bit of a battery sat on that back line being able to dish that power out um because you're right you know if you're getting two plasma rifles off um you'd expect to you know whoever it's against you'd expect to be getting you know at least a couple of damage through so a couple of power putting him up to up to three um which yeah is then enough for you to be able to to dish out so yeah i do uh i do like that um <clears throat> who else is in there that's interesting beast Beast is a character, even though he is an inhuman. I mean, it's hard to say, right? Because, Quinn, when was the last time you went to an event, other than the weekend with Ron, where anybody had even taken inhumans and played them to any sort of of level? Um, I mean, it's pro- but, probably like the last Sanctuary event that Ron was at, I'd imagine. Well, okay, but where other I played inhumans. <laughs> other than yeah, Ron. Yeah, I think you were. It was either that one or the one before it. You were definitely playing inhumans at one of them. <laughs> um... But, you know, Beast is is an interesting character. Um, you know, I know a lot of people don't like the fact that, uh, you know, with his ambush, for example, it's a guaranteed place, but it's off a trigger. Uh, sorry, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's a mandatory place, but off a trigger. So it's like, well, if you don't want it, you're relying on not getting the wild sort of thing. And but... if you do want it, then you're relying on champs yet again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So what, what, what sort of role does Beast play for you in, in the Inhumans? Uh, well, because he's a medium base, um, it means that if I don't want to take crystal, and I only normally take crystal on hammers uh, because it makes her insane, um, but it means that Beast can grab any midpoint extract with Eyes on the Prize with one move and still remain safe. Yeah, yeah, it's really it's a Eyes on the Prize, pay one power, um, interact within two instead of the normal one. Um, I think if you get in another power into him as well, um, I find, you know because you know because he needs he needs two, doesn't he? So um, yeah, pick up one point. So you get a power into him from the Inhumans leadership, and then he can play the card, move up, and then move back, um, and be out of the range of deception, which is a thing that people need to play around at the moment, really, isn't it? Uh, yep. Because Mystique is in is in a lot of places. Um, Let's talk about your crisis cards then, Ron. So you took Demons Downtown, you had Infinity Formula, uh, Intrusions, and then you had Fear Grips, Newton Extremists, and Skrulls Infiltrate. Um, when you are rolling for priority, whether you win or lose, 
what are you more focused on? Are you more, more focused on what secures you get, the extracts, the shape of the map, um, the threat level? What What's the sort of most important thing for you when, when you're deciding uh, what it is you either do or don't want to play? Uh, 100% is map setup. I cannot stand playing D. It absolutely drives me insane. D secures are bullshit. Yeah, just for anyone that's not aware, when when we're talking about map shapes, we're generally referring to secures because the secures don't move. Well, at, at least with the exception of one, I think it is the secures that don't is, move. Yeah. yeah. So when so when we're talking about a map shape, it's it's generally the secure map shape. Obviously, even though we have maps on the extracts, so Ron's obviously got the the D map in for for fear grips, for example. Once they're picked up they're picked up and they move with a character yeah. so it's less of a concern so yeah i gather cosmic portal is is is, is not a favorite of yours then ron uh cosmic portal my my least favorite crisis in the game full stop is spider portals yeah I do, yeah i don't it's i'm not horrific, a fan of that anyway. like, i've played yeah. against Aaron enough to hate it <laughs> the, the, the range two place off the skull is horrific yeah and i roll yeah. a lot of skulls so <laughs> yeah you do which is fine because you've got beast and he gets power from them right so Ooh, you know power at boy. least you get at least you get that um and then let's quickly run through your tactics cards and so we've got brace for impact eyes on the prize that you've already mentioned fall back you've got inhuman royal family we've got marked for death we've got mission objective pyrotechnics which is there we already know is there for the fluff Yep. Uh, rock and Troll, Sacrifice, and then Terra, Terra Genesis, Terra Genesis even. Um, the, the Genesis. The gen yeah. <laughs> um, interesting to see Sacrifice over, over Patchup. So what what's the what's the thought process behind that? Yeah, it's Black Bolt dazed. That's yeah. literally it. <laughs> Keeps the maneuvers safe, so gets Black Bolt dazed. Black, Black Bolt takes a hit for someone and then uh, gets to flip. So for anyone that doesn't know, Black Bolt is significantly better on his injured side than he is on his healthy side. Um, and he's also backloaded with stamina as well, isn't he? So he goes from being a, a five-star like character... To a nine. To a nine, uh, but he also gets Whisper on Best his... Best spender uh, in the game, period. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty. Uh, it is pretty good to say the least. Everyone know. gets. I'm a, I'm a big fan of Crimson Bands, man. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I don't know. I do. I do like this one. I do like this one. Um, but yeah, I thought you may have even taken. Um, oh, what's the name uh, of it? Um, one where you take damage instead of spending power. Uh, no, no matter the, the cost. cost. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, so previously when I played, I, it was like, normally my when I played Inhumans previously, is I had a, I had a pretty significant turn one play where I would attempt to roll decree Black Bolt, he moves medium, he no matters the cost, and he does a round one master punch. Yes. Um, but because I was le leaning so heavy into Ulic, um, I decided to drop no matter the cost for Rock and Troll. And yeah, and uh, the problem with dazing Black Bolt round one or round two is he then could no longer contest secures, and that's the big issue. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a good point. It's a good point. Uh, you do lose that ability. You know, having having a character day so early, um, it can it can hurt. Um, let's go back to Rock and Troll then, because it's a card that you know I don't think a lot of people have taken Ulic places. Um, what what sort of scenarios were you using it in? When when were you using it? Were you using it during during his activation? Outside of his activation, were you just you know getting him to certain characters to try and take out of the game? What what what? When was it being used? Uh, so I played Ulik five out of my six games, and in four of them, I did a round one rock and troll. Nice. <laughs> Literally just to alpha strike someone. Get them down as quickly as possible. Because I was unfortunate and I had to play Web Warriors four times, it was literally, I'm going to kill Gwen round one. Oh, of course, yeah. Because she she starts to cause real problems for attrition teams because 
just using her slippery shit and pulling people out of the way. Um, yeah, so I gather... Because that Pounders is actually... When you read Ulick's card, like, it's a pretty good attack, right? Six, six strength and a size four push, um, should you wish. But then Shatter Mountain, Shatter Bones is pretty good. Um, I believe you did Bad Manners. Push. Pardon? Shatter believe... Mountain, Shatter Bones. <laughs> that, that was just my normal voice, so I don't have to do it. That's Ron's voice, yeah. Um, and then you've also got Crushing Leap as well. So short advance, then a range two place, then a pounders, which I think is the same price as a rock and troll, right? It is, yeah. So I gather he can just move about the board. He can literally so go where much. he wants. Yeah, and just get to where he needs to be. Yeah, very, very, very interesting. Um so, so and, and, and yeah, so in my game five, I had to play against Guardian Thanos, Tyrant Lord Nick, shout out, and he took uh, Space Reality. And all Thanos did for four rounds, he, he managed to get three hammers on him really early. And all he did for four rounds was Space, Cosmic Portal, Cosmic Portal, double move. And without Ulik, I wouldn't be able to win the game. I, like, I had to have Ulik just to chase him down constantly. Right. Uh, and when you played your games with Ulick, where did you find yourself deploying him most of the time? Was it like flanks? Was it central? Was it map dependent? Um, so if it was something like hammers and I had priority, I would deploy someone like Beast, Captain Sam, or Crystal on the hammer that I'm doing at Eyes on the Prize, safe extract play with, and I'd put Ulick on the other side. So mm. they come and take their hammer, Ulick jumps forward, kills them, grabs a hammer. Yeah. Um, if that's not the case, then it's normally quite central. So, okay. especially on scrolls, for example, like if they don't get the trigger um, to them for them to be moved, a crushing leap doesn't get them there. You have mm. to use a rock control. If they go on the back end of their own scroll and they don't get the advance, um, the only way to reach them is either with a raw decree crushing leap or a rock control. So you're going more for the strategy of getting you look in there rather than having him walk up, take your home scroll, and then like walk back to safety, right? No, he's in straight away, first thing. Yeah. He was he, like, and one of the other reasons I wanted to take Ulik is, is because I kind of wanted a deterrent for Mystique on Senators. So obviously, mm. Hulk comes up, takes one, Jugs comes up, takes the other. And they both move backwards. Well, all I need to do then with Ulick is drop him in the middle of them both, which is fairly easy to do because they're both massive. And all I need to do is roll a wild on six dice for each one to pull them back into my team. Yeah. Um, but yeah, obviously, it... I didn't get the opportunity to play it. Yeah, because it is omnidirectional, isn't it? That push it is, on yeah. pounders, which is, you know, on a which large is base, yeah. that is a huge range that you're able to I think that, to move that characters. That omnidirectional nature of the push is actually one of the biggest parts of Ulick's kit, and one that I don't think was as obvious uh, when we initially saw him spoiled. Yes, yeah, no, I, I I agree, I agree. Yeah, he's uh, he's pretty good. So 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 when it sounds like Ron, whenever you played Ulick, he he did some work for you. Um. So, in two of my games, he pretty much went god mode. In two of the games, he was probably above average than what I expected him to do. And then one of the games, which was my second one, he did six attacks into a toad and did three damage. Oh, dear Lord. And that's all he did. <laughs> okay. 0.5 damage in attack seems reasonable. Yeah, well, that's where Medusa steps up. If Ulick fails, Medusa steps up. Yeah, no, that's fair enough. That is fair enough. And um, how, oh, how, um, how much is he missing a character through? Because when when I was first looking at his card, I kept looking at it and thinking, if bad manners was terrain or character, he would just be so much better. Because um, obviously, I could see why they didn't give him character throw because he can literally go wherever he wants and i think that's like i don't know if, if you basically said you can put your model anywhere and then throw a size four character you'd think well that's busted 
and <laughs> it, it probably is. Um, but because he can go anywhere he wants, I think the size four terrain throw is fine. Because you just, I'm going to jump near this size four, and then I'll throw it at you, and then I'll jump in and hit you. Mm. Um, and, if, and if that was a character throw, I think it'd just be obscene. Yeah, you, yeah, you're probably right. You're probably right. Um, so, moving away from from Inhumans, but sticking on Ulick for a, for a minute, then Ron. Um, and by the way, guys, if you've got any questions for Ron in the chat, get them I, in now. I've, I've seen a couple that I've um, been keeping track of. Okay, cool. So we'll come back to them, but um, <clears throat> we'll we'll we'll. If you've got any more, put them in. Um, for people who are looking at Ulick now and, and maybe thinking, yeah, he can do some work in other other affiliations, um, is there anywhere else, Ron, that you think he would fit? Is there anywhere else you think that he could he could do some work? Um, any affiliation that can give him a, um, a power, round one, would help him massively. Um any affiliation that wanted a midpoint uh, safe extract play, uh, but for five threat, it's a big ask when you could do it with like a four threat like Beta Ray Bill, who is just as tanky, if not tankier, than um, Ulick. But I think Dark Dimension has got a great place. Um, I don't think he belongs. I don't know. Like Crimson, Kingpin Crimson, I think he'd be incredible. Well, yeah, yeah, and he's affiliated be... as well. Yeah, so you could go Rhino, Ulick, Kingpin. Like, how the how how the fuck do you deal with that? That is utterly brutal, isn't it? Like, what do you what do you do to, with or that? What can men do against such reckless hate? <laughs> I, I can move to any secure, and I can't lose too. Cool. Yeah, it is. It is pretty crazy to say the least. Um, let's have a quick look at some questions. So, Gregor's. Uh, asks, I want to know, after characters, what is your favourite crisis out of the six you took, Ron, and why? So, um, of the six of the six crises that you took, which is the one that you that you, that you prefer? Um, well, I normally hate hammers, like I really fucking hate it, but in this roster, I love it. I think it's my favourite one, because Especially when you have priority, like, I have so many characters that can do a safe extract play with Eyes on the Prize that I can just camp Ulick or Black Bolt on the other hammer. They walk forward, they take it. If they have no safe extract play of their own, then they're either losing the hammer or they're very close to losing it. So it's probably no, hammers. That's, that's fair enough. That is fair enough. Um... Let's have a little quick look through. Um, where else are we? How does Ulick compare to a to other five threat characters like Juggernaut? Oof. Well. Um, um, yeah, he's. I don't know, man. There's something about Jugs. Like, there's a reason everyone plays Jugs, and it's because the guy is just incredible. So, like, compared to Juggernaut, I don't think Ulick's that good. Uh, but compared to some other five threats, like, I don't think Ulick was as bad as everyone initially made out. And I think he's probably... I think he probably sits middle of the pack uh, in terms of, like, five threat strength. Like, he's better than Black Bolt, and I love Black Bolt. Uh, but he's not <laughs> better than Strange, and Strange is the best character in the game, so... Yeah. Uh, OG Strange or New Strange? OG Strange. Either it don't matter. Uh, they they both never let me down ever. You just you just both you just you just like spending. Uh, sorry, playing with strange. Yep. Um, with this roster, uh, who do you think would be your biggest counter in terms of affiliation? So I suppose the question there is like, you know, what were you least looking forward to being paired up against? Uh, it'll probably. Um... I don't know, actually. Like, I was really worried about Guardians, to be fair, because I didn't really have an answer for Thanos. Um, but I played against Guardians twice, and only one guy had Thanos, and it was, like, a very, very difficult game to play. Um, I, I had a plan going into Mystique. I had a plan going into Web Warriors. Um, I had a plan going into X-Men. 
Um, maybe Weapon well, X. I've not really had much. Uh, I haven't really had many reps into Weapon X yet. It's a good job you had a plan going into Web Warriors because I've just pulled up the results here from uh, from the event. So round one, Web Warriors. Round two, Web Warriors. Round three, Guardians. Round four, Web Warriors. Round five, Guardians. Round six, Web Warriors. So it's it's a good job you did have a plan um, because I think <laughs> running into that many Web Warriors and I'd have I'd have thought that. Of all the teams, Web Warriors would have been the one you struggled against purely because, you know, they seem to do very well against attrition-based lists. You know, they move people about, they pull people into safety. Um, but I gather, you know, your counter to that being Ulick just jumps on Gwen uh, and smashes the living shit out of her um, probably was a good answer to it. Uh, yeah, pretty much. Also, Medusa, like, uh, you can do some pretty funky role decretion elegance to get your characters back into position. Um, no, like, I've played against Aaron enough to know how to deal with <laughs> Like, in every single roster that I make, regardless if, regardless of the event I'm going to, the first card that I always put in is Mark for Death. Just to stop yeah. those, uh, just to stop those re-rolls. Yep, give, get rid of stealth, yeah. move slow, no re-rolls. Buy Black Cat, buy Miles. Not dealing with them. I mean, it's also good against characters like Strange, right? I know he's not as popular in the meta at the moment because defenders are in a dire place. Yeah. But that there are a number of re-roll heavy characters that just sort of fold if they don't have them. Yeah, also, like, Convocation's, like, still quite prominent. There's still a fair few Convocation players, so... Into Sorcerer Supreme, just, yeah, like, he just melts. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. Uh, Amph asks, do you think that you caught people off guard with him because one, he was new and two, people just massively underrated him? Um, so do you think that was one of the factors that people were a bit like, what the hell is this guy playing in humans with Ulick? Is he some sort of fucking idiot? Uh, not that anyone would ever dare say that to your face, Ron. Um, but do you think that may have been part of it? Oh, one hundred percent. It's like it's, it's it's also the reason I put pyro and pyrotechnics in. Like when you're playing humans, you literally need to take every advantage that you can get because they are extremely difficult to play and they don't normally perform that well. Um, so obviously, gaining to your opponent's head a little bit before the game even starts is always a good thing. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We're not the danger room here, mate. Come on, calm down. <laughs> Mind games? What you want about Ron? <laughs> but no, it's a good it's a good point. Like, you know, um, you know, to, to to your point, they they are not in the upper echelons of affiliations in the game. Oh god, um, no, they've never been up there. <laughs> um but what they, least, what they... they were pretty good. Like OG Medusa was a menace to society. Yeah, but not in Inhumans, man. That was like Yeah, never in thing. never in Inhumans. Yeah, a solid run when Inhumans came out. It was fine. <laughs> um but yeah, I mean look, they but what they do have is a very, very good leadership. Uh, being able to to hand that power out and dish that power out to turn on other characters um, is is pretty damn good. Uh, did did you get to play with the bestest boy much, Ron? Did he feature much? I used him in one game. My plan for the boy is whenever I have to play senators, so he teleports himself, he picks up a senator, he then moves to a point, um, and he so still has a power to dish out. Um, but I only so have to play sad. Senators once. Oh, Glyn's just asked a question, and I'll let Ron answer. In fact, I'll let Ron answer, and then we'll tell you another little story about what happened this weekend. Um, so Glyn asks, Ron, Rich or Quinn, who's the better player? Um, in terms of like overall player, I'd probably say Quinn. Um, but Rich is like, once he gets his roster down and what he wants to play, I think he's one of the toughest opponents out there. Like when he did his unaffiliated run, um, yeah, that were that was scary if you got pulled up against that because again, it were like it was an Inhumans type deal. It's well, well, what's this moron playing? And bang, you're dead round too. Right, and I did. Rich, before you get into your thing that I know you're about to do, I'm going to hark back to one of the questions I saved in my brain. 
uh, that Swedish Troll asked, which was, what was everyone's favourite moment from the weekend? Oh, Ron winning. W- without a shadow of a doubt. And sorry, I've jumped in ahead of everybody else there, but um, I've never finished an event and been so happy that somebody else other than me has won. I might act like I'm really nice and I'm gracious in defeat and all that. I fucking hate losing. I absolutely hate losing. Um, But I actually think I preferred Ron winning the whole thing rather than me winning the whole thing because of the way that he did it. Um, It was... It, for, for everyone that was there, so Anth, I know you were there. Dr. Cameron, if you're still in, I know you were there. Um, it, it, it's one of the most... It, it, it's one of the most wholesome moments in MCP I've ever seen. And more so because Ron, whilst he's a big guy, Ron, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, right? You're, you're also one of the quietest guys anyone will ever meet. You don't like being in the spotlight or anything like that. So whereas somebody else winning winning within humans may have had the tendency to rub it in people's faces and try and say how good they were and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Ron's not like that at all. I don't um, know what you're on about. Ron never shuts up. <laughs> but um, Ron, what was your... You're not allowed to say you winning. So other than you winning, what was your, what was your favourite? Say you winning. <laughs> To be honest, even if I even if I could say um, it was me winning, it, it that wasn't my favourite moment. Uh, my favourite moment was watching Marcus Gill play Aaron Collier Friday night, uh, Saturday night. Sorry, Saturday night. Oh god! Um, literally one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Like period, not just at a gaming event. You're like Marcus you is an incredible guy. You weren't there for the Wong activation, right? I missed the Wang activation, but I don't know, man. Just watching Marcus Gill just run around the hall, like absolutely taking the piss out of Aaron Collier, was just incredible. <laughs> hey, that that Wang activation, where so, so Marcus was playing Convocation, and he had a Wang activation after Mar- after Aaron had dazed a bunch of his team during an all webbed up turn, and he went, okay, I'll go with Wang, I'll meditate, I'll pay one, Vishanti's blessing, remove the condition from Strange, done. And Aaron went, I- is that it? Like, genuinely confused. <laughs> and Marcus just turned around and went, Give me back the token! Give it back now! And made him rewatch the entire activation again with this just look of mad glee on his face. It was amazing to behold. <laughs> well, I mean, there you go. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what my favourite moment was because it was a moment that no one else really got to witness. Because uh, it happened in the privacy of our quarters. Um, so, for those of you that don't know, uh, the majority of people at the event were sharing rooms with two other people. Um, I was sharing with Jonah and John Naylor. You weren't I... because no one would like be near you in that extent. Uh, Ron, yeah, you were yeah. with Marcus and Aaron, I think. I was, yeah. Yeah, so um, early on the Saturday morning, um, I was sort of literally sat up in bed not really like in that you know huge state of semi-consciousness that you enter when it's just a bit too early and i was sat forward in the bed like this and just from you know over to the side i hear jonah just whisper quinn you awake and i just sit there and it's like "I i can't really be bothered with this sat there still forward like a few seconds go by jonah goes back scrolling on his phone and then, like the dick I am, I just turned around and went, <laughs> and he absolutely shat his pants. It was great. <laughs> great. Like, legitimately, sort of hand over heart, <laughs> like, clutching his pearls. It was brilliant. And this is why I don't share rooms. Because, I mean, um, yeah. Because... I-, I was going to say something, but we're going to leave that. <laughs> You're talking about me bleeding out of my ears. I, I was, yeah. I was going to say, if you shut yourself, it'd be a lot more clean up. <laughs> um, I've seen from fucking Dexter. <laughs> yeah. So, so back to your question, Glyn. Um, some of you, if you've been following the channel for for the last, what was it, over just over a year ago, um, back end of 2021, um, me and Quinn had 
a Brotherhood off. So what was a Brotherhood off? Well, we both play Brotherhood of Mutants and the loser was not allowed to play Brotherhood of Mutants for an entire year, um, which is why for the last year you have not seen me playing Brotherhood of Mutants. Um, so fast forward, year goes by. I still haven't played any Brotherhood of Mutants because um, I'm just not in, not like enjoying them. Friendly, but nothing. A little bit in friendlies, nothing competitive. So round four comes up. Day round two. Round five. Round, round five, five even. You. Yeah, round five. So the second game of the Sunday. And it's always in the stars. Me and Queen get paired against each other. So both four and one. Um, he's Avengers and I'm Guardians of the Galaxy. So we're about to start playing. And somebody said, oh, you should do this like you did with the Brotherhood one. And whoever loses... Can't play that affiliation for the next year. I really want lost... to remember who it was, and I genuinely can't remember. I don't know who it, it was. It wasn't Jonah, I don't think. No, but Jonah I don't think did it walk was. past quite late, soon after that. You let Jonah pick the uh, the secure. He did. He, he absolutely fucked and me. He Cos- for the jump scare. He he he, uh, he picked Cosmic Portal. Um, yeah, the the one of your three secures that I did not want. Yeah. So Quinn. Who's not playing their affiliation for the next 12 months? It me. <laughs> so Quinn cannot play Avengers. Um, it was a very good game. Um, I'm not sure about that. It, it, he got beat hard. <laughs> he got beat real hard. Um, and in all fairness, a lot of that was down to my own mistakes round one. I was just an absolute idiot and forgot I could assemble Widow after she got shot once. That is true. That is true. Uh, Billy Gaming says, I wish I was there this weekend. Mate, it would have been great to have you there. Uh, Gregor says, favourite moment, meeting all the lovely people, including my favourite content creators. Oh, there we go, Gregor. Um, As I'll get on to now. I don't know, man. He... S- seeing him pissed up were funny, though. <laughs> <laughs> like, there were some people drinking there, but on, like honestly... I don't know how he will still walk in Saturday morning. <laughs> Never mind Sunday morning. Right, um, it was just I, incredible. On on the Saturday night or the Sunday morning as well, sort of a midnight. Uh, like I had promised to get a game in with Gregor's, and we did have that game. And it was uh, my Avengers versus Weapon X, and I got fucking tabled. <laughs> you did get tabled. I, didn't I you? got tabled. I had an absolutely awful defense roll with Cap, and it just sort of sealed the deal. I think I rolled four dice flipped against a claw rush from Laura and just got four hits and was just like, oh, cool, he's dead. <laughs> like, nothing I can do. So I'll just put this up here. I think this may have been post-game uh, or at some point on that Friday or Saturday night. Um, but uh, yeah, Gregors, it was great to meet you. Uh, and we're doing this just to annoy your housemate, Gregors, as you've already told us. It, yeah. will, uh, it would really, really annoy him. But um, huge shout out to... Um, to the guys that organised it, to, oh, this is where I'm bad now at remembering names, to Brett, Paul, Gavin, Mike, Mike Matt. and Matt. Matt. Matt, there we go. <laughs> the guys in pink, you couldn't miss them. The guys in pink. Uh, it was a really, really well done event. Um, it was unique, I think, in the fact that um, it was a, somewhere called York uh, Race Course. Uh, and it was the stable side in there. So we basically had 24-hour access to the top and bottom floor where the gaming rooms were. So, I mean, I was up until 4, 4.30, the first night playing games. Um, I think Aaron had about an hour's sleep the entire thing. Um, so it was really unique in the fact that everyone was staying in the same place. Uh, your accommodation was included as part of the ticket, um, and you just have people playing all sorts of games, not even just MCP. Uh, we played some Unfathomable, where woohoo! I I managed to uh, to beat you a lot of that one as well. Um, in fact, Quinn, I don't did know, you man. win? I think that were down to Dan, not you. Dan did really well. I already knew that Dan was a traitor, so uh, so yeah, it was good. But no, we got to play what a whole bunch of different me? games. Now I was going to say, did you manage to win a game? 
of anything this weekend, Quinn. I won three oh. games of MCP. Other than your three MCP games. Uh, I won a couple yeah, of rounds of coup. Coup. Yeah, I won a Did you win some coup? coup. Okay. There we go. You can have them ones. Uh, but yeah, guys, it's a great event. Um, we will... Um, we're going to get the guys on the channel when they do it again later in the year. Uh, so we'll give you all a heads up as to when that will be. Uh, but a really, really well run event. And, you know, just one that is definitely worth uh, worth going to um, as and when it comes up next time round. Uh, cool. Let's just double check because usually they release something on Twitter. But I can't see anything that AMG have released. Uh, they've given us 3Ds of Emma Frost. Emma Frost. Woo. Yeah, I'm not even going to... We're not even going to show you this because it's not worth seeing. It's really yeah, it's not. Pretty, pretty poor. Um, cool. Right, on to the next part of the show, which is the painting competition. Um, the theme this week was characters that you would like to see another version of. So we've obviously got Daredevil and Shadowlands Daredevil. We've got the really good two threat agent widow and the other version. Um, so yeah, any character who you would like to see another version of. Uh, so what is the painting competition? It's a Thursday or just a day late. Of course it is, yeah. So it should have come out yesterday. Nothing came out yesterday, though, did it? We got Sound three news of Rex. Woohoo! Um, so, painting competition, weekly painting competition, what do we do? We set a theme every week. You guys submit your entries via the Discord. Um, and every week we pick out two honourable mentions and we pick out a winner. Uh, what do you get? Well, you don't get anything immediately. You just get the honour of being the winner for the week. But um, everyone who puts their entries in goes into a prize draw where you can win whatever Rivals pack comes out next. Um, we had um, <clears throat> the last winner. Uh, I forget who it was. I think it was Lism. Um, might have even been Liam. It wasn't Liam Jones. I can't remember who it was. Anyway, um, but they received theirs the other week. Um so we don't know what the rivals panel is next, but whatever it is, you'll get put into the prize draw for that. Um, so first honourable mention um, goes to um, Acro84. And this was my pick. And mainly because not only is it A, a very nice paint job, but B, God damn, do we need a better version of Cable. Like, it did my boy dirty. For any of you that have watched the channel for any sort of time, I love Cable. Um, and this guy has been done absolutely dirty. One of the worst, if not the worst leadership in the game. I don't know what um, you're about. He's perfectly reasonable. He's not perfectly reasonable. Yeah, he is. He's fine. He, he has the same you. builder as gr as Rocket. No, he's got Wild Incinerate. Woohoo! Woo Three threats <laughs> for a Wild Incinerate. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he broke drop off. Okay, he must be good. Does this mean that Ron, that Quinn can't play Avengers in the current TTS season? Yes, it does, Glenn. He had to play Avengers. Uh, he had to play Guardians last night and nearly Did lost. He had to play. I just won. <laughs> nearly lost. I mean, uh, that does mean win. But... Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, don't forget. Just, just remind me, could... Rich. Just remind me. What's your current league record? Um, I once finished sixth. That, that, no, no, no. What's your current league What's record? the highest you you've ever finished? I don't know. I made it through cuts and got somewhere. I can't remember where. There we go. Um, don't forget, we couldn't pick someone who already had two versions. That is correct, Bleach Orange, because we don't need three versions of anything in this game. Hey, um, don't say that, because then they won't give me another Doctor Strange. Because you, you want another Strange, yeah. There we go. Um, I want the next Rivals pack to be something no one needed, a Black Panther versus Killmonger. What do you mean nobody needs that? Like, I'm more than up for that. But yeah, Killmonger, bring out Killmonger in his panther suit. In his panther suit, Ooh. yeah. Cap versus Crossbones. <laughs> John West. 
I, filthy man. No, no. So Cap v Crossbones, but it's um the Winter Soldier scene where he's in the elevator at the Shield headquarters. So it's just Cap surrounded by dudes that he's just beating the shit out of. Dear me, dear me. But anyway, yeah, Acro eighty four. Oh, <laughs> Acro eighty four. Uh, well done, buddy. You get an honourable mention this week. Um, usually, whoever set the challenge gets to pick one honourable mention and one winner. But because we had a uh, special guest on, and because Quinn was so kind, he did give um, his honourable mention to Ron. So the second honourable mention is from Odd Eyes, and it was this Green Goblin. And I think what he was actually saying is um, he didn't necessarily want a new version of Green Goblin. He, he wanted, wanted Hobgoblin, Hob uh, yeah. which... I'm also down for as well. Like that's that's absolutely fine. I, think that'd be uh, cool. but I, I mean, I also wouldn't be opposed to getting like a red goblin. I think that'd be crazy. Red goblin would be pretty cool. Uh, Ron, what what stood out for you with this uh, with this paint job? I think Ron might have fucked off for a minute, so I'll do my okay. best Ron impression. Job. It's not. It's not picking you up on the mic. It's not. I was... <laughs> For, for those of you at home, I was doing... Uh, Quinn, unfortunately, you doing your best word impression would involve you winning some games. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Once again, <clears throat> what are you currently in the league? Uh, two and one. Okay, you playing your game tonight, yeah? I am playing my game tonight. Okay, yes. we'll see how that goes for you. We'll see. I do need to build a roster, though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're not playing Guardians again? I'd probably stick with Guardians for this. Um, I have built a Sentinel roster. Oh, Iron Patriot is a good shout, actually, for, for another version of Osborne. We need a fifth shield user. Give us the US agent. US agent would be quite good, actually. Yeah, I um, guess, like, maybe leader of Thunderbolts or something. That would be cool. Do, do we think, though, the Rivals panels moving forward are going to be new versions of old characters... Or could we even see potentially it's just new, new characters. characters in them? Oh, um, I don't know. Maybe. <clears throat> but yeah, I am Patriot. It, would right, be cool. here's one for you then. All right, R R Ron's back. Ron, please talk to me. Hi, Ron. I can't Welcome rumble. back. I'd like for that much longer. Ron, please. Oh, please is this my submission them. pick? It is. This yeah. is your submission pick, Ron. Yeah. Goblin looks great. Can't say any more about it. It just looks so good. <laughs> it does look really good, doesn't it? Um, it's like a weird blend of like almost comic book style, I think, because of the black lining. Kind of makes it look a little bit comic book-esque, um, which I'm perfectly down for. Um, but yeah, really, really good submission. Odd eyes. And then the winner for this week, picked by Mr. Quinn Duggan, uh, is from Graham. And it is... Let's get you zoom out there a little bit. There we go. Uh, and it is the Thor. And I think what he was saying was we want to see Rune King Thor, which I don't think anyone would be opposed to uh, seeing a Rune King Thor. I'd be more interested in an Unworthy Thor, to be honest. I think Unworthy Thor would be a very interesting piece. So like a, a three threat, a two threat? like Four threat, I reckon. Four threat. Four threat? Yeah, he's the god of lightning, not the god of hammers. Like, yeah, he's powerful with Mjolnir. He's still a badass without it. Oh, I don't know. What was oh, yeah, his weird name that know. he had? Something Blake? Donald Blake. Donald Blake, wasn't it? Was that, his, that's like, his old ego, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which I think he can only access through Mjolnir. So that's, you know, not what Unworthy Thor is. Unworthy Thor is after Jane takes the hammer. But ah, like before, okay. but without like all the Stormbreak stuff from the MCU, um, and he has like a little dog called Thori who's a Hellhound, and he's great. I, I want that. Give me that. As a card or as a little model that comes with as him. As a little model that comes with him. Little Asgardian nice. tooth, right? Feral. Can't like <laughs> Honey Badger. Just literally slap Honey ba like <clears throat> Honey Badger's rules on Thori. There you go. Nathan well, brings out a very good point. Doom Thor with the belly in the video game controller. If we get any other version of Thor, it needs to be Throg. Throg would be good, but is that a version of Thor or is well, that... Yeah, like he is Thor. 
I suppose he is multiverse Thor, isn't he? Um, Bring out Pet Avengers. Pet oh, Avengers, yeah, mate, yeah. we've been we've been harking on about that on this channel for so long. Pet Avengers is needed. The model we need is Jeff the Shark. <laughs> Jeff the Shark would be incredible. I would be so down for that. Uh, but Graham, well done, buddy. You are our winner of the week. Uh, again, you don't win anything, but you, your name goes into our wall of fame that doesn't exist either. Um, no, no, it, it's a full-on wall in Rich's office. I've seen it. Yes, yeah. Fantastic, fantastic four versus Doom core box twenty twenty three. Nope. nope, not core box. I'm not letting them dumb down Doom. No. <laughs> yeah, me and Graham no. were talking about this yesterday. It needs to be a core box where it's Fantastic Four versus, say, the Wrecking Crew, and then yeah. Doom comes out alongside it. it Doom That's does not enough. get rele relegated to a core box. We're not allowing that. No, that is fair enough. And I don't think he would. I feel like Doom comes in a Dormammu, Thanos-esque pack where you get some terrain, you get some Doom bots... You get an ultimate encounter with him. Like he feels like that sixty-five, seventy dollar pack. I don't know yeah. if you guys agree or uh, I think anything it's anything's gonna be better than fucking weapon X. <laughs> it's a low bar now, yeah. It is a really right. bofar. Uh it's right, really guys. Bofar. Really bofar, yes. Um Throg and Spider Hammer's a pack. I'm down somebody, for that could, no. somebody could no, 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 no. Make... Throg and Alligator Loki. Alligator Loki would be good. Um, my last wish listed model is Wonder Man, but I'll also take Hercules or Doc Samson. Arnim Doc Zola Samson Wall is like a guy who hangs out with Hulk, right? I think so, yeah. He's like a gamma man, I want to say. Isn't there another Hulk that's like the up to date? Is it? Uh, what's his name? The the Asian guy who takes over Amadeus Hulk. Cho. Amadeus Cho, that's it, not Choi Cho. Um, it'd be it'd be nice to see some other Hulks. Like I'm surprised yeah, like we don't Hulk have a red. Would be cool. I'm surprised we don't have a red Hulk, right? Yeah, I want a red I mean, Hulk. Like, once they decide to do Thunderbolt, we'll get like a red Hulk leader for them. Like I imagine he dishes out Incinerate and he's immune to it himself, right? You'd think so. Yeah. Yeah, you'd think so. Um, <clears throat> cool. Well, we have to pick a theme for next week. Now, it would be yeah. my turn, but Ron, as you are the guest, um, would you like to pick a theme for this week's painting competition? Um, well, in honour of the weekend, let's go with an inhuman. There we go, guys. Any inhuman. Are we including Ulick in there as well as an honorary inhuman? No, gotta gotta be an inhuman on the nope. affiliation list. Just an inhuman. So anyone from the inhumans affiliation list, I think there's like six or seven, is there? Something like that. You've got the seven. four inhumans seven. and then Ronan, Beast, and Ms. Marvel. Oh, I'm quick. So oh, no, there's there's eight. There's eight, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so there's eight. There's, you've them. got Beast, Ms. Marvel, and then Crystal's two boyfriends. There we go. Yes. <laughs> So yeah, that is the uh, that is the theme of this week. Um, Zemo Thunderbolts were best Thunderbolts. I do agree, Kaylee, with that one. I do think Zemo's Thunderbolts were the best. Um, guys, that's going to be it from us this week. Uh, Ron, thank you so much, buddy, for taking the time and running us through your roster and the weekend. Um, Dave gets to put Lockjaw in again, he says. There we go. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it was it was really good to have you on, Ron. Uh, we'd love to get you back at some point. Uh, and maybe, who knows, um, next time we're talking about how you managed to win a weekender with Winterguard or whatever else. And what I will say is, guys, is look, look, look at what Ron has done with the Inhumans, right? And this is what we're always saying on this channel. You'll have other channels out there that'll say this this is just not competitive. This isn't a good this isn't good enough. We always say here that you can play any affiliation and any character in this game. If you find a way to be able to do it and find a thing that you can work out that nobody else has quite done, um, you can completely take people um by surprise. Like look at what Ron did with the Inhumans. You know, not blowing my own trumpet, but 
it's very similar to what I did with my unaffiliated list, where you turn up with something and people don't know what your plan is, right? That's if a you lot turn like up, your trumpet being blown. It is, yeah. No, but my point being, Quinn, is that, like, you know, Ron, and I'm sure you'll agree, if you're sat across from Mystique, Hulk, and Juggernaut on Senators, you know exactly what the hell's going to happen, right? Yep, you have telegraphed so. what's happening. Try and think about the game and try and think about putting your own spin on how you're going to play these characters because if all you're doing is following the process that other content creators out there have shown you what to do, guess what? Everybody else out there is watching them, right? Everyone's using Mystique at the moment. Lots of people are playing Rhino. Lots of people are playing Pyro. Um, try and do something a little bit different. And I think it will absolutely pay dividends because people then have to make decisions there and then on the battlefield and it can often mess up the plan that they had in their head. Um, so I think it's a great thing that you've done, Ron. It shows that no matter how bad something looks on paper, if you can work out a way to make those characters work and those affiliations work, um, you can really catch people by surprise, catch them off guard. And as you've done with this one, Ron, uh, go 6-0 and uh, and take down, um, you know, one of, if not the biggest event that we've had in the UK. So, yeah, really well done on that one. Thank you. Guys, we're going to leave it there. Um, if you want to know a little bit more about uh, what Ron has done, uh, go check out the Web Warriors Protocols podcast. Yep. Uh, number one that just came out yesterday. Um, I, Aaron, I, I purposely tried to ask Ron some different questions to what uh, Aaron asked him. Um, so go check that out. They go into some other details, not necessarily more detail, but other details on there as well. Uh, and, you know, just ask questions on the Discord. Uh, Ron's part of the Discord as well, so uh, if you want to ask him questions about that, he may never get back to you. Um, he but, definitely um, won't. He <laughs> but, but the other thing I will say as well, if you want to watch Ron play more games, um, Ron, Quinn, plus a few other people often are playing on the Savage Lands Discord. More often than not, they're streaming their game. If they're not streaming their game, if you jump in and you see them online and give one of them a poke... Um, one of them will typically stream the game that they're playing as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, go, go check that out. Guys, we'll leave it there. Um, if you could leave a like on the video, it really, really does help. If you want to support us even further, we have our Patreon up and running. Uh, as I mentioned, head over to the Shadow... Uh, sorry, to the... Um, Savage Lands, even. They call it the Shadow Lands, then. The Savage Lands Discord. Um, it's the most friendliest place to be for MCP. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time. We've got a Shatterpoint video coming out tomorrow. Uh, me and Quinn sat down and spoke about the new squad building aspect of it. Um, so be sure to keep an eye out for that one. Um, <clears throat> and we'll be carrying on next week. We haven't decided what video we're doing next week, Quinn, have we? Um, but I think we might be looking at, again, Quinn doesn't know this yet, but we might be looking at characters and tactics cards uh, and who has the best. So maybe our top 10 choices for characters that bring a tactics card with them uh, and that should really be stapled onto them. At, oh, we'll, at we'll do a tier list of all the character-specific tactics cards. There we go. No, we've done one of them already. We'll um, do another one. <clears throat> but yeah, there we go, guys. We'll leave it there. Um, take care until next time. And uh, yeah, we'll see you later on. Bye for now. See you. Bye.